Hello. Today we have a college professor, a communication specialist, television radio producer. She's affiliated with the arts, social and political activist, and always in the front, forefront, an educator. Today we have Dr. Roz, Dr. Rosalind Norman, affectionately and politically known as Dr. Roz, today on the Bernie Hayes Show. <laughs> Welcome back. As I told you, my guest is Dr. Roslyn Norman, known affectionately as Dr. Ross. Dr. Ross, how are you? I am wonderful. How about you, Bernie? Wonderful. Dr. Ross, you're the founder of Gateway GIS. What is that? Well, Gateway GIS is, in academic terms, a social innovation intermediary, which, you know, another way to say it is that we're about uh, connecting and collaborating uh, for the purpose of community building through science, technology, engineering, the arts, and of course mathematics, which is, you know, in many circles known as STEAM, okay? And uh, through STEAM, uh, we utilize our various relationships uh, to help our uh, young people particularly to prepare for the future of work that's happening now. And in, in many ways, uh, we do this through the recruitment of highly skilled volunteers. So really, we're volunteer driven uh, with people who are really committed to giving back to our community, giving back in the sense of their time, their talents, and their resources. So it's not about Gateway Giants going out saying, hey, you know, send me a check or raising money or doing all these fundraising events. It's about really getting people truly engaged in building the kind of community that we need for today's, you know, world that we live in. Okay. Tell me the difference between STEM and STEAM. The only difference is that we add the arts to STEM, you know? So think mm -hmm. about it. STEM deals with science, technology, engineering, mathematics, whereas STEAM adds the arts, and so it becomes science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And so basically what you're looking at is how all of these elements are connected. And when you think about that, you think about when we look at what's happening in this global, you know, marketplace, uh, with Gateway Jazz, we see those connections, okay, for all of those elements and what we do. Mm -hmm. And in preparing for uh, what's happening, we need to make sure that, you know, we, when we start to think about where we are as far as a community, you know, let's think about how those elements can help us to reimagine our community so that we are better prepared, you know, for what we would face, you know, not just now, but also in the future. Mm -hmm. I know, Dr. Ross, you're a college professor, uh, and I know that you're so interested in, in higher education. So is the GIS program directed at uh, high school students, college students, or everyone at home? Well, you know, we have a saying uh, mm -hmm. that some of uh, our collaborators, uh, and particularly uh, some of the ones who, you know, as they say, um, understand the generational piece, and that is that we're looking at, just like there's a saying, there's a, you know, a, a school pipeline to prison, well, we look at a pipeline that starts with the parents, the, you know, the, preg the pregnant mom, the fathers, and, you know, the infants, the preschoolers, all the way through, you know, elementary, middle school, high school. And for those who want to go to college, there's, a, you know, a pathway for that, as well as for those who want to go immediately from high school into a career pathway, we look at that as well. So the saying for us is from the cradle to C-suite, meaning the executive level, for those who want to go into the corporate uh, pathway, to beyond, which means entrepreneurship and for the, you know, for those who want to look at something other than, you know, some of the more traditional pathways. I know Gateway GIS is affiliated with so many other organizations, professional organizations especially. So do you have a brick and mortar? 
Shut no, you. because mm -hmm. this is the beauty of Gateway GIS is that I have learned, and this is, you know, really dating back to even when I was at Vashon High School, and I, you know, as a graduate of Vashon High School, I was even doing some research back then, uh, and it's been more than 50 years, uh, and looking at it, the future being, with, you know, us being able to adjust to not having to be uh, concentrated in brick and mortar or an actual structure. Uh -huh. You know, I saw the role of technology even back then where it would, you know, come a day where we should be able to work anywhere. So as long as I have a smartphone, a laptop, computer, iPad, you name it, I could be anywhere in the world and still do what I need to do for Gateway GIS. Tell us about the students and what they do. Oh my goodness, um, I'm excited in that the um, banner that was shown early on uh, was a recently designed banner by Malik Andrews, who recently graduated from Clyde C. Miller Career Academy High School, one of St. Louis's you know, public you know, high schools that really deal with careers, technology, um, education and you know Malik was my intern this you know this past winter spring semester and thanks to um, St. Louis youth jobs he was paid you know doing this internship and part of you know the assignment that he had was you know to design this banner uh, for the recent Spirit of St. Louis air show and STEM Expo where Gateway GIS had, you know, a booth, and we shared our booth with one of our major collaborators, Air Varsity Drone Pilot Academy, uh, which, you know, was started by a, a very distinguished African-American female, uh, Bronwyn Morgan, and so she was there uh, for the event that just recently took place in Chesterfield, Missouri, and we were able to display that banner along with her banner from Air Varsity because, again, we're about connecting, we're about collaborating, and you're right, we have a number of partners, not just locally and regionally, but across the United States of America and even overseas. So we really have been very fortunate since we first started Gateway GIS in May of 2019. We're now into our third year, and I can tell you we've been so blessed to have more than mm, roughly 130 partners. You know, you spread them out. <laughs> and like I said, each, you know, each of these partnering organizations, they bring uh, a certain kind of resource that we are able to share you know, through some of the programming that we put in place. I understand you have another piece of literature that we filmed earlier. I mm -hmm. wonder if we could see that and tell us what it's about. Okay, great. Uh, that logo that you see at the top, Gateway GIS, well, actually that logo resulted from a logo design contest that we kicked off right around the same time that we started Gateway GIS back in May of 2019. And it took almost a year uh, for the contest uh, to uh, get the kind of input from young people anywhere from the age of 11 all the way through 26. So it was really from what middle school all the way through college and grad school. We had, you know, a few interests uh, uh, interest, uh, expressed for the logo design contest, which offered a cash award. And, of course, it ended up being two middle school students that inspired the final design for Gateway GIS logo. And, of course, we split the cash, you know, Re, you know, reward between the two students. Uh, and as far as the motto, the motto Act Locally, Think Globally, was also a part of developing uh, this concept that's really going back to urban planning uh, that started with the reverse of that slogan in United Kingdom was a Scottish urban planner, I do believe, uh, who talked about the importance of not only thinking locally, but, you know, as you plan, you also have to think of how it has implications worldwide, you know, depending on the kind of business or, you know, whatever your vision is for your organization. So that's why we have the logo. And like I said, we flipped it and simply said, you know, to act locally, but at the same time, think globally. Dr. Ross is our guest, Dr. Rosalind Norman, and we're at the New Life Evangelistic Center. 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri, where Reverend Rice has been performing these services for over 50 years, more than 50 years, in 1411 Local Street to here at 2428 Woodson Road. And it's 50 years 
helping you, and we sincerely hope that you'll be helping him. We'll be right back with Dr. Roz after this. It's so easy to get tired out, burned out, and worn out, and that's why we have to let the rivers of living water flow over us and believe that God is doing a new and great work at this time, standing up to the oppressors that come from every different direction, having God wash us from, uh, clean from all the fears, the worries, the uncertainties, the what-ifs, and stand up for justice at this moment. Justice doesn't mean just us. It means letting the rivers of living water flow through us as we get in touch with God. This past week, I've been reading a book on George Washington Carver, a great man who had every excuse in the world just to kind of go through life. But instead, when he saw a problem, and he saw a problem, he cried out to God and believed Him for a solution. He cried out to God at a young age, said, Lord, show me your universe. And he said, it's too great and too big for you. Well, Lord, show me man, how he's made up. He said, that's too big for you. And then he said, Lord, show me a peanut. Show me how peanuts made up. And what did he do? God used that man to turn the South upside down as he came up with all these different usages for the peanut. And instead of just growing cotton, they started growing peanuts. And he started showing usage for sweet potatoes and so many other forms of vegetation in life. One man calling out and letting the wisdom of God flow in him and through him. This is the first day of the rest of our lives. So let's give the Lord our life, not our excuses. Let's believe him like George Washington Carver did, to do exceedingly abundantly beyond we can even ask or think. This is a glorious day, and he's promised to release his unlimited power in us. He says, ask it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock it shall be opened unto you. He tells us in John 14, 12, behold, I tell you the truth, if you believe in me, Jesus said, you can do the very works I do, yes, even greater things. I'm going to the Father, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. George Washington Carver did that. You and I can do that. We can see the unlimited, unlocked in our lives as we stop whining and start becoming winners and let the power of God flow in us and through us. Welcome back. Dr. Rosalind Norman, affectionately known as Dr. Ros, is our guest today. Uh, Dr. Ros, uh, what was the mission on that particular pamphlet that we showed earlier? Yes, uh, the mission for Gateway GIS is bridging the digital, geographic, cultural, racial, and economic divide. And really, that was driven based upon a manuscript that I had written back in 2005 and is now in the process of uh, being published as a book. But I want to just read quickly from this manuscript. Sure. Uh, and it's based upon, um, the mission is based upon how I was thinking about what Cornell West had described uh, when he was talking about institutionalized racism and how it has scarred the psyche of generations of African Americans. He, go on, he goes on to write that 244 years of slavery and nearly a century of institutionalized terrorism in the form of segregation, lynchings, and second-class citizenship in America has devalued black people because of white supremacy ideology. This way of thinking leads to actions that dehumanize and de devastate the human psyche by leaving personal wounds deeply inscribed in the souls of black folks. And that, to me, is still happening. And, you know, I think one of the driving factors of why Gabriel GIS at this time, after having to have been involved with, you know, various uh, youth programs and uh, community development projects for, 50, you know, 50 years plus now. Um, I think about the building of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, New West headquarters that's right there on the corner of Cass and Jefferson yes. in North St. Louis. Right. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in that neighborhood. I grew up in what was referred to as Jeff Vandaloo. And literally, when I saw that this was happening, it brought back, you know, what Cornell West had described and how I had captured that in this manuscript that I wrote back in 2005. And I'm thinking, here it is. Uh, when I was starting Gateway Jazz and had, you know, really sought the input from a variety of different stakeholders from, you know, academia, you know, ver you know, various universities, as well as community nonprofit organizations, some government agency representatives, and of course, a number of different uh, uh, business uh, leaders. You know, I started thinking about 
are we continuing this cycle where we devalue and dehumanize who black people are in the community I grew up in, Jeff Vandaloo, you know, and I can still recall, you know, having been blessed to be around people like Macri Shepard, who started Jeff Vandaloo, to be around people like Norman Say, who was truly a civil rights activist who worked with the then Congressman William L. Clay, uh, who was at that time one of the co-founders of the Congressional Black Caucus. Um, and of course, to have had a mentor like Katherine Nelson, uh, who was a well-known, uh, uh, you know, educator. Um, I, you know, I think about standing on their shoulders. My, you know, I feel it's my responsibility to find a way to look at how do we not get erased? How do we, uh, uh, you know, avoid continuing to be dehumanized and devalued because this new $1.7 billion facility is being built in our community, which means that kind of facility will be attracting people from a workforce that is going to be heavily reliant on not just the geoscience part of what goes on with geospatial intelligence uh, you know, as far as mapping, but with the technologies that's going to be needed within this, you know, within this whole, uh, I guess you can say, catalyst of what's going to be happening in the future of work happening now. Okay, so looking at that, that's a long a way of explaining that I, I saw a connection with how can we reclaim, how can we reimagine our communities without being again, pushed into that second-class citizenship, if not totally just eradicated, you know, because of the influx of the kind of employees that would be coming to work at National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, but also all the other companies that are now moving into the area that are requiring the kind of skill sets that rely upon for example, coding or computer programming. So when you think about that, that helped me to start looking at what is a constructive way that Gateway GIS can really help in the community building process so that black people and people of color period are not left behind again and again and again. As long as I've known you, you've been an advocate for social change, positive social change, and I described you as a political and social activists. Uh, so tell me what we can do to join or get more information from Gateway GIS. Well, I'm happy, in fact, I'm honored that I can announce that the Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis, um, which is you know part of the Grand Center Arts District, um, they have been one of our uh, partners uh, for the last couple of years, almost right after starting Gateway GIS. And when I approached them about doing uh, a Gateway GIS neighborhood banner project, it was with the intention of looking at how do we bridge that Del Mar divide, which is that geographic piece that, you know, is part of our mission, and at the same time, how we look at putting the arts and STEM, which creates STEAM. So having a relationship with the Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis and their funding and providing the resources directly to several schools and after school programs to produce the research and to actually train young people from elementary school through high school how to use what we call the graphic design software and they even paid for laptops for some of the young people as students from some of these schools to be able to design these banners. And with the help of their paid, um, what they call graphic design art educators, they went into these different schools and actually helped the students. And of course, when the pandemic hit, we had to do a lot of that online. And it's taken us a lot longer than we had initially planned because of the pandemic. But I think that, uh, in a way, it's a blessing because that neighborhood banner project will be on exhibit starting July the 15th. And it will go through 
September the 18th. And what we plan to do for the young people and the different art instructors at the different schools, along with the graphic designers that were hired by Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis to have them to, you know, work together to create these series of banners that really look specifically at at least three of the neighborhoods that will be surrounding where they're building the new National Geospatial Intelligence Agency West Campus. So in looking at Jeff Vanderloo, looking at uh, St. Louis Place and even Car Square, we were able to see what the, ch the young people, the children, the teenagers selected as heroes from those neighborhoods. Okay. And they were depicting them in these banners that, like I said, would be on exhibit starting July 15th uh, at the Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis. And after uh, September the 18th, when the exhibit closed, then those same banners would be gifted to each of the participating schools, right. okay? okay, and also to the city of St. Louis, Third Ward, Alderman, Brandon Bosley, so that we could have them displayed on the light poles that's lining Jefferson Avenue on the uh, Jeff Vandaloo side of, Jeff, uh, of um, right. Jeff Jefferson. You, you being a television producer, you know we have to take a break. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so Thank we'll, you. we'll be right back with Dr. Ross and all Okay. Right. As we celebrate 50 years of God's faithfulness, how I thank God for all the years that we've been able to work side by side with Bernie Hayes. What a blessing this man has been. And what a blessing all of you all have been as you've continued to partner with New Life Evangelistic Center so we can feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, reach out and be a family to those that have no family at all. Now as we're celebrating 50 years of God's faithfulness, I'm asking you to pray that we can get back into 1411 at Locust at this particular moment. It was such a hideous crime when rich folks moving the neighborhood shut that building down and put the homeless on the street. So many are suffering out there. Now, if you'd like myself or my grandson, Chris Aaron, to come and share with your church or business or group, please call us at 314-421-302. Yes, we're celebrating 50 years of God's faithfulness, thanking God for Bernie Hayes and all of his supporters and all of you that have been praying. The door's open now. We want to move into 1411 Locus. We've got to complete the work. Through your prayers, through your involvement, we can make a difference. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. Our subject for today is Dr. Henry Gibbons, who was born in St. Louis in 1931. His name became synonymous with Harris Stowe, the college he rescued, transformed, and nurtured, and led for more than three decades. He grew up in the Ville, once the city's black cultural center. He graduated from Sumner High School in 1950, and in 1954, Gibbons graduated from Lincoln University in Jefferson City. After leaving Lincoln, Gibbons became teaching at the old Douglas School in Webster Groves. He became principal in 1967. He earned a master's degree in education at the University of Illinois Urbana and a doctorate in urban education and school administration at St. Louis University. In 1973, Gibbons became the first African-American assistant commissioner of Missouri's Department of Education. He left the commission to accept the job as president of Harris Stowe State College in 1979. He died Tuesday, July 20th, 2021, at the age of 90. The Bernie Hayes program is uh, produced at NLEC-TV uh, right here at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. It's our new headquarters since they closed the 1411 Locust building. We're working to get back into that building. In addition to that, trying to help so many people through a wide variety of safe houses, training programs, transportation assistance, so many ways people are getting help because of all of you that are supporting the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. Now, if you'll send a gift of $25 or more, we want to send you this special, the Bernie Hayes Show Cup. And we're giving that to people. It's just a way of saying thank you. So when you send your gift, request a cup. We'll be happy to get it off to you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You can give online at nlecstl.org. Now I'm really asking all of you to join us in praying. The needs are so phenomenal at this particular time. So many hurting and homeless people are contacting us daily, but we're able to help them because of each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time. Tell your families and friends about NLEC TV and get directly involved yourself. And welcome back. My guest is Dr. Rosalind Norman, and we call her Dr. Ros. Dr. Ros, uh, tell us a little bit about you, the GIS, how we can support you or get more information from Gateway GIS. Well, we have a website, and by the way, the website was designed uh, with uh, young people 
representing high school and college students along with highly skilled, creative uh, adult artists. So I'm very, very happy again to mention not only was our logo designed by young people with, you know, with uh, guidance of uh, an, you know, an adult uh, creative director, but also our website the same way. And so if you look at, at the screen, you'll see you can go to our website at www.gatewaygis.org and you'll, you know, you'll find more information about not just Gateway GIS, about uh, various other resources that are available. And a lot of them are free, you know, for those who are interested in looking at what's going on in STEM slash STEAM, okay, as far as education as, and as well as career preparation or workforce development. And, Dr. of course, Ro if you want, you can also send an email to stlgatewaygis at gmail.com. Okay. Dr. Raj, you've been so, so involved in so many things. You, you, you were even at the National Blues Museum when they opened. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now you're with Contemporary Arts and uh, so many other wonderful things. Briefly, we only have about three minutes left, but tell us briefly about who is Dr. Roz Norman. Wow. Well, you know, if I can refer back to a wonderful quote that was written by Miriam Ruiz at Contemporary Art Museum, St. Louis, and it was in reference to the Gateway GIS Neighborhood Banner Project, and it is that we were talking, and, you know, she more or less said, well, you know, Rosalind, what you're describing is that you're saying that you don't want to see these neighborhoods buried as they have been and are continuing to be in St. Louis and all over the country. And she said, you know, there's a Mexican proverb. And she actually said it in Spanish, but I'm going to give it to you in English. Sure. And it is, they tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. So I see myself as a bridge, just like I use that as part of my um, way of describing myself when I was at Bashan. Uh, I see myself as a bridge. And, you know, just helping people to realize that uh, I refuse to see us buried, okay? I want to, to see us grow, you know, and to really prosper and to thrive in spite of, you know, what's going on around us, and, and particularly in Jeff Vanderloo. You've always given information, especially to those uh, around you, surrounding you, for those that they speak with. Can they reach you personally, Dr. Raza, if they wanted to get more information from Dr. Raz personally? Well, you know, I prefer if they go through um, the, the Gateway GIS sure. Gmail account or, you know, if they want, they can check out the website. But I find that people who even go to the website, they still end up, you know, sending emails to uh, the stlgatewaygis right. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, anything you want to say before we leave? We have about a minute and a half left. Well, um, I just want to say I encourage uh, black people, people of color, to, you know, to continue to just pull together and learn to work together to collaborate because I believe that we're missing the Albert Einsteins because those in the dominant culture and those who are in decision-making positions have not recognize us and the contributions that we could be making, you know, uh, to this world that could be a much better place if we were to be included. Do you plan on returning to the classroom, Dr. Ross? You know, I would love to, but if, even if I do, uh, I prefer to do it on a part-time basis, which most of the time <laughs> I end up doing anyway, because I yeah. love doing what I do, you know. I can't tell yeah. you how much I appreciate seeing you. Every time I see you, I, I learn so so much more, and you're so active and doing so many wonderful things. Dr. Norman, Roz Norman, thank you so much for coming to visit with us today. All right. Thank and you, please, Bernie. Please stay safe and have a great day okay. and a wonderful life. And I know that Gateway GIS is going to be very, very successful with you at the helm. Thank you so much. And each of you, thank you for supporting the New Life Evangelistic Center, Dr. Larry Rice, and all those affiliated with us. I'm Bernie Hayes. Have a great day. If you have not been vaccinated, please get your shots. Have a good day.